Welcome to the Assets Group here in Productronica. I'm designed, uh, delighted to be joined by Marcus Wilkins, who's the president of Assets Americas. Uh, nice to see you again, Marcus. Hey, Trevor. Yeah. Likewise. Yeah. Um, of course, Productronica is only every second year. Uh, so last November, I had the pleasure of going down to see your technology days, mm -hmm. uh, which is very interesting. And uh, one of the really nice things I saw there was the materials logistics handling. Uh, you had AGVs uh, taking materials to the line uh, and also even taking feeder banks to a pick and place machine. Mm -hmm. uh, have you developed that since then? Yeah, so what we have done since then, um, and absolutely correct, uh, time has passed. So now we are not only looking at the assembly line, but we are also considering all the other materials that we need to bring to or away from the assembly line. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, feeder uh, reels, uh, for instance, paste jars, um, or finished product. Right. So from just uh, pretty much considering a magazine exchange that takes uh, a magazine from the end of the line to the beginning of the line for the second pass, for example, mm -hmm. Now we are considering all the other um, assembly um, uh, parts that are involved in the manufacturing process. So um, one of the items, for example, is um, S10 Select, our fridge um, that not only stores the paste, but also keeps track of uh, shelf life yep. and then generates a label that in return you can again then include in kind of a master barcode setup with the printer to make sure no one is using an expired paste, for example. Yep. It's very important, very important. Okay, what about the, the actual devices themselves, I mean, and the, the component storage? Uh, you recently made a, an acquisition earlier this year uh, of uh, Totec. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they have a very sophisticated system for MSD control and this type of thing. Uh, how big is, is that featuring in your, your uh, overall logistics strategy? So, uh, Totec acquisition, yeah, absolutely correct, part of the family now. It's a, it's a nice uh, add-on to what we consider the material logistic part. So, mm -hmm. here we have now um, someone in our group who can actually provide storage, but also under dry conditions, even regenerate certain um, settings uh, according to the JEDEC standards. So, this is a, a nice addition to what we uh, so far had in the past, where we only had the cabinets. Um, under our ACES Cleanome division. So now we have an add-on product that is going past the available dry, uh, towers from other vendors. Uh, this is central storage location in dry conditions, so we are talking 100, 120,000 reels and up. Right. So this is the MSD Super Dry Tower? It's the uh, dry tower from Totec, correct, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Excellent. Okay. Uh, what, and uh, the capacity, you said, of, of this? Well, you know, it's a modular system, so you can start with pretty much one cluster and then add on as you grow. But um, a typical system is um, ranged around 100, 120,000 reels and, and more. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of your logistics are controlled by your, your pulse system. Uh, can you explain how that works? Yeah, so on Pulse, Pulse is a machine to user interface. So, Pulse is a system where we provide the infrastructure. It's an open infrastructure to any third party vendor that wants to participate, um, no cost. And then these third parties control the content, what they want to share on an interface like a, an iPad or a smartwatch. Mm -hmm. um, however, it's important to know that this is really a system that is geared towards helping the operator or the supervisor for the human in the manufacturing floor. Right. So now we have further developed that and have pretty much dissected the Pulse system into individual apps. Mm -hmm. With these apps, uh, we focus on, for example, assigning machines to a user. Let's say first shift, one user is not showing up for work, I can dynamically reassign those tools to a certain tablet so I cover all the machines on the plant. Mm -hmm. um, or other statistic tools that allows you to look at bottleneck and then fine tune your assembly line. Okay. And does it interface with some of the cobots that you use? Uh Absolutely. So yeah, uh, Industry 4.0 is uh, nothing without the use of some robots, at least uh, to a certain degree. So um, here at Apex, we are showing a cobot um, taking the task of loading and offloading a semi-automatic router, in this case a Divisio 2100. Great example for how flexible they can be used. They can be moved around from one to another location. And of course, there's a Pulse interface that uh, you can send certain messages and alerts to the system to an operator to mm -hmm. come out and, and help. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, earlier today, of course, uh, or yesterday, should I say, at, at Proletronica, we had the official launch of the, the Hermes project, uh, and Asus was one of the original architects mm -hmm. of, of the system. Uh, how important is that, and how does that fit into uh, the, the, your overall uh, strategy? 
So I think in, in the ACES world, you know, standards are good. You know, if, if I look at MES connections today, there's a gazillion of them and every, one, every single one is the best. So the Hermes standard will allow us to add a lot of the, um, the IDs, the information to a specific printed circuit board versus today the SMEMA standard pretty much just allow tracking of a board, but I don't know which one. So going over to the Hermes standard with a lot of the vendors here out of the European community will allow us to maybe forego some of the scan stations in all these lines, we'll say floor space, and will pretty much enable the smart factory. So we have information and we pass it along from tool to the next tool and that will, will be of great help if you look at uh, the next step, which is the MES connection to one level up. Right, okay, okay that makes sense. Um, You've also um, introduced a new addition to your materials handling side with the, the, the Vigo, uh, which is a, a system which uh, allows uh, automatically uh, senses the, the size of the, the uh, conveyor, I think, uh, yeah. and, and adjusts. Yeah. Uh, uh, can you explain more detail how this works? Yeah, so um, the next step what we have done is take a look at, again, not only the assembly line, but also what's around us. Um, and in a lot of sites you see a huge array of magazines and depending on what product they run you start uh, seeing employees who will adjust the width on these magazines. Yeah. So we have taken that to the next step. We have the information on our line control what width the product is we want to run. Mm -hmm. So now we have integrated an, a system that will allow you to adjust the width of a magazine on the fly once you put it on the magazine table of a tool. So here we are reducing floor space, we are reducing operator um, involvement, and we are um, avoiding all the errors that are being made by setting up a magazine too tight or too wide. Right. So the next enabler to have an automated factory without a lot of uh, room taken up by a ton of different magazines. Different magazines, mm -hmm. so trying to automate everything as much as possible. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the, the, another key area of, of the ASUS um, stable is of course ECRA uh, machines, mm -hmm. and you have a new ECRA platform here. Uh, can you tell us about that? Yeah, so the, the first thing about ECRA is of course that we, we keep developing all the different tools that we have in our bag already. Uh, primarily this is the IPEC system, mm -hmm. so integrated paste and glue dispenser. Uh, today we are at the, the point where you can select between a typical auger or a jet, okay. but also for glue or paste. Um, so, for example, if you have a type 4 paste, you cannot jet, you will have to use the auger mm -hmm. available in our portfolio. If you go to a type 5, you can jet that paste, um, likewise the glue, and you can use a jet, and this is also available. So, on, on that front, we are enhancing the portfolio we have, mm -hmm. but uh, you're asking about the new tools in, in our pocket. Um, it's a new 3D printer mm -hmm. that allows us to pretty much not do the traditional 3D printing, which would not be a screen or stencil print, but just uh, pretty much uh, what everybody knows as a 3D printer. So right. in our world, we are calling it 3D screen printing, mm -hmm. which implies there's still a screen involved. However, the advantage is we can use any material, typically metals, to be 3D printed. Okay, but, but you're, not doing it through a, you're not doing it through a screen, you're just doing it through a build-up process. It's an additive process. Um, it is through a screen, it's a screen print process. However, the advantage printing these different metals and then going through a curing process and then in the end a sinter process allows you to go up to 200 millimeters in the 3D Z height and with that um, you can get structures very fine, 50 micron and smaller mm -hmm. and very tall with the same consistency and the add-on to the printer is um, pretty much a magazine of multiple screens yeah. so if you change the image on that build-up that you're doing the machine will automatically grab the next screen for the next layer and do the screen exchange automatically. Wow, very sophisticated. Uh, so, uh, are you finding quite a bit of demand for, for the, the 3D printing? I mean, uh, a lot of factories really should be looking at them for tooling and this type of, of application. That would be the traditional 3D printing, absolutely. It's mm -hmm. quick, it's available. You're somewhat restricted in the material you use. Mm -hmm. The 3D screen printing that we are talking about, mm -hmm. the big advantage is that you can do metals or any material that is available and you're not having the same restrictions. Yeah. So in our world, this will go probably more in the military or biomedical industry, mm -hmm. very specialized um, printing, I don't know, organic materials yeah. uh, to grow cells if you want to, or maybe printing um, uh, very special metals um, for a catalytic inverter, for example. Right, right, right. It's very exciting stuff, Marcus. You're always coming out with innovative materials and products here. Uh, so, um, 
you know, we'll take a closer look at these uh, over the next few months, I'm sure. But uh, for now, thank you very much for joining us. All right. Thanks, Trevor.